The rapidly increasing world population forces us to handle the resource that is soil more and more efficiently. The pressure increases significantly as a result of climate change and ensuing desertification in turn forcing us to generate consistently growing agricultural yields from steadily decreasing available arable land. Leftovers of industrial development constitute a further strain on available land area. Old manufacturing plants, waste dumps and military facilities contribute to the contamination of air, soil and waters. These factors endanger food security and generally hits the population hardest, mostly the poorest countries of the world. Additionally, human and institutional capacities to identify, respectively remediate contaminated sites resulting from industrial activities are often in developing countries. Technical environmental investigation techniques and analysis methods, for example laboratories specializing in environmental analyses, are rarely available in low-income countries. Samples often have to be sent to distant laboratories by plane, causing high additional costs. In order to counter this very dilemma, two initial workshops were held in 2012 in Mozambique for representatives of the environmental agencies of several southern and eastern African countries, with the support of the International Council of Chemical Associations, the ICCA, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, and of the German Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit, the GIZ. The aim was to present some simple, cost-efficient and universally applicable investigation methods and tools. Former or current workers on the respective sites as well as residents in the immediate surroundings interviewed with special questionnaires are very important sources of initial information on what chemicals were used and therefore what contaminants might still be in the soil. The local population, for example a gardening neighbour, can be helpful in determining soil types and the depth of groundwater level. These data already allow an initial evaluation of the risk to which these important goods worth protecting are exposed. An internet search usually helps to find quickly what chemical substances hide behind the product names, as well as their toxicity and relevance for the further evaluation in a second step. Suitable maps of the related parcels of land are not available. Therefore, initial spatial surveys and the locating of operating plants, known contaminations, wells, soil modifications, etc. are paramount. They can be carried out by means of a GPS system in conjunction all over the world, with the aerial images and maps contained in the free-to-use databank of Google Earth. The coordinates of tracks and identified landmarks can easily be imported and saved into this program and sent to any other user by email. Distances, areas and ground elevations can also be determined on the Internet. The field observations can be matched with current and historical aerial images. In the vicinity of bodies of water, even the depth to water table can be estimated by determining the difference between ground level and water surface level. Several types of soil or groundwater contaminations can already be recognized from their color, oily luster or a characteristic odor. For example, Originally colorless oil generates a green or respectively black coloration of the soil as a result of the microbiological degradation which is virtually active permanently and everywhere. These colorations result from the transformation of iron compounds in the soil. The impact on the soil usually takes place only at the surface making it particularly important for the evaluation of impact risks through direct contact dust dispersed by the wind and due to agricultural uses. Soil sampling and organoleptic inspection can therefore be carried out without the need for large drilling rigs by just using a simple auger or spate. 
The qualitative determination of the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons through their fluorescence is an investigation method that can be applied on site. The toxicologically problematic PAHs have to be dissolved from the soil with acetone, everywhere available in form of nail varnish remover, and exposed to short-wave ultraviolet light in a darkened room. A yellow light is generated under UV irradiation, the intensity of which correlates with the PAH content. The technique can also be carried out with battery-operated lamps in the field. The odor of many substances, like some oils, is so characteristic that it allows a very specific identification. The smell of diesel oil, petrol and kerosene is usually so distinct that one is immediately reminded of airports or petrol stations. Further examples are tar or wood impregnating oils with their characteristic Kraesol's odor. As a rule, one should always firstly inform oneself about the toxicity of the potential substances before performing an organoleptic test so as to avoid health risks. The concentration of many gases in the atmosphere can be semi-quantitatively determined by means of test tubes, like for gasoline, benzene and phenols. A defined air volume is passed through a test tube with a hand pump. The contained reagents show a color reaction, the intensity of which depends on the gas concentration in the air. The content of gasoline or benzene in water can also be determined with gas test tubes. A defined volume of water is filled into a gas washing bottle, the volatile substances are stripped with the help of air input and passed over the respective gas test tubes. The pH value, as indicator of the acid content, oxygen content and electric conductivity, as indicator of the total salt content, can easily be measured with electronic measuring probes and constitute important parameters for the first evaluation of the water quality. The pH value of natural water usually lies between 6 and 7. Low values, acid, or higher values, basic, can indicate anthropogenic changes. However, acid water naturally occurs in peat bog and basic water in limestone areas. The 8.8 .8 milligrams of oxygen are soluble in one liter of water at 20 degrees centigrade. Lower concentrations indicate oxygen depletion, for example through biodegradation, whereas higher concentrations are not in equilibrium with atmospheric air and can be caused by water plants, by photosynthesis and resulting oxygen release. High productivity of water plants can indicate a nutrient input into the water bodies. The salt content of fresh water can be estimated directly from electrical conductivity and then compared with other measuring points. The concentration of numerous substances in water can be determined semi-quantitatively with test strips, for example for nitrate, nitrite, ammonia and divalent or reduced iron. Their concentrations in water are important for the understanding of the biochemical environment and of the degradation of pollutants. Color reactions take place in the reagents contained in the test strips. Their intensity depends upon the concentration of the compound. The initial evaluation of an old factory or an abandoned storage facility regarding possible environmental risks for human beings or other protected goods is of particular importance. A decision must be taken already at this early stage with respect to further actions necessary to handle the suspected contaminations. A total decontamination of the soil or the groundwater is rarely possible due to technical and economic constraints. It is therefore essential to find an appropriate solution in order to prevent potential risks. The aim of this film is to supply a small contribution towards the realization of this goal.